Well, okay. This is the first ever uh, live broadcasted interview from A Hitchhiker's Guide to Truth. And I couldn't think of a, you know, a better guest than, uh, than Mr. Will Keller from Natural Freedom League. And, you know, there's a bunch of other people that I would have loved to include on this, but Will and I had a prior engagement for this evening. So without any further ado, Mr. Will Keller, how are you, brother? I'm doing good, brother. Thanks for having me, man. It's a, it's an honor. Well, dude, honor's all mine, man. You know, we talked a you know some months back we had sean with us but tonight we're uh we're you know just uh just the two of us so that's great as well now just to jump right in man you you're uh you're putting together you've put together a conference right that's right yeah we're, it's the uh the funnel conference so we have a uh like an autonomous group that we've been meeting uh once a week for about a year and a half now and um we decided to come together and move forward and, and create an event. So we were inspired by uh, Brandon Martin and the Cubby Hole guys at the Seed Four. So we decided to do a virtual event and uh, we came up with the Funnel Conference. So Funnel is an acronym for Freedom Under Natural Law. And uh, we got some great, great presentations coming and uh, the speakers in variety of topics, holistic health, spirituality, self-defense, parenting, freedom, um occultism it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a nice event and it's our first one so we're excited for it and this is gonna be uh february 12th and the 13th no kidding yeah coming up dude february is such an exciting month for, yeah. for me for me personally right on uh, yeah. excellent so now it's even more to look forward to just add it onto the list man yeah anybody it's a free event so they can go to uh freedom under natural and uh just register and we send you the link when it's uh when it's time to go and um and you, anyone can view it so it's awesome. gonna be nice Excited. who is it now who, who's speaking at this obviously you i imagine uh john john's uh, also doing uh, his own presentation so okay. we're keeping the first one just up uh, just our autonomous group so um, there's four people in our group that are on the, the One Great Work Network, uh, Dom, Dominic Tremblay, Chris Janston, uh, my partner, John, and then we have uh, a variety of other, other people that are, this is going to be their first time, you know, coming out into the public and doing presentations and stuff. So we're, uh, we're uplifting each other. It's a great support network. And uh, yeah, just kind of trying to inspire people to kind of do the same, right? Get together with like-minded individuals, start a start a, a group and have some meetings and then put that into action and create something. That's awesome. Yeah. There's a total of uh, eight speakers. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Cool. What are, what are you talking about specifically? Ah, nice. Good question. Uh, my presentation is, and I've been sitting on this one for a while, so it's a good time to, to release it. Um, very straightforward title. It's the state of freedom what it is and what it's not. And um, I think a lot of people, when we look, even in the truth movement and the freedom movement, a lot of people don't actually know what true freedom is. So I'm, this is my, my presentation that's gonna be talking about the spiritual aspects and how do we create, achieve, maintain freedom, and importantly, what it is and what it is not. You know, a lot of people think that, um, you know, rights and, and freedom comes from uh, a collective of agreements or the Constitution and stuff like that. So uh, I get into um, a very esoteric and um, spiritual aspect of freedom because it goes hand in hand, right? The physical and the spiritual realm. This is just one and the same. So we need both aspects. And I try to, um, you know, my partner John and I, our motto is simplify the profound. So I'm trying to do a straightforward presentation that's going to be impactful. And uh, in any time I do any type of work, I try to make that work for any type of person to understand it and comprehend. Um, so hopefully this is a presentation that anyone can send to their, you know, their, um, their mom, their dad, their, their grandmammy, their grandpappy, and, uh, and anyone can watch it and, and get a grasp, a true grasp, um, an accurate grasp on what freedom is. 
Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Like, I like what you said there about your presentation style. You know, I recommend anyone that wants a little, you know, glimpse of, of what my man will here does for his presentations, go check out his presentation from seed four and you'll see what I'm talking about. Actually, that presentation is what made me go. I got to talk to this dude because he was just boom, boom, boom. One thing after another in such a con when you think about how long a conference or a, an event like that could really be, you guys don't understand. And I don't even really understand, but to be able to condense that much information into such a short amount of time, when you consider the grand scheme of things, one hour, one and a half hours, hell, even two hours is not a lot of time. And this gentleman, he, uh, he really, he really knows his stuff with, when it comes to doing that. Uh, I admire his work greatly with the parenting talks that he gives and everything like that. It's actually helped me out a lot. So personal, Thanks, thank I, you. I appreciate that. You know, um, so you also, you mess it, you, you mentioned Chris Jansen, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually met him and, and talked to him. He's a really great dude. Oh uh, yeah. Chris is, is phenomenal, man. He's, he's kind of my, my rock, my go-to, if I need some grounding or inspiration, Chris is the guy who's very, uh, level-headed and, um, just a great problem solver all around stand up dude. So got a baby great, crying. Yeah, great guy to be around. What's Poor that? Babe. I got my, my daughter's crying upstairs. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that. That's that dad life, man. You got to balance the two. Right. For sure. Right. But yeah, man. So what else is new with you? I know you're in a new, you, you, the background there looks new. You got a new studio. What's up? Oh, yeah. So, um, careful. Shortly, this was about, um, I guess, August. Yeah, about August, I did a whole, I had to get out of the location that I was at. So I moved um, from my, my previous home. So I had, I, and I was in this home for 17 years. I built a whole studio in the garage. And, and so a lot of good memories, but it was time for a change. So, you know, I, I welcomed it with uh, open arms. So yeah, I'm in a new location, still trying to dial it in. Um, so just hung up the tapestry for now and uh until i get you know a better setup but you know yeah it's it's going good and things have been going really well got a lot of projects in the work for this year coming up with the uh, natural freedom league i'm doing some personal uh, i'm going to launch a website uh, which is willtelltruth.com i already have it. it's almost finished and i'll be launching a presentation series which i'm really excited for um so yeah got got some it's always you know you got to work on things just a little bit at a time so but i'm excited yeah, man, it's a, that's insane. 17 years. Huh? What made you want to move? Um, well, relationship issues. I was co-parenting with my daughter's mom and we weren't together, but we were living together. So that was kind of, it was time to part ways in that aspect. And then uh, my older brother actually owned the house at that point. And, uh, you know, and I'm in California, the housing market is crazy. So um, he pretty much, you know, tripled his money on that house. It was time to sell. And it happened at a good time because everything going down, it, we were ready for a change. So, and it was time to, to kind of part ways. So, yeah. What's uh, up, buddy? He's like, yeah, he's fist bumping you. I got my co-host here. <laughs> you want to say hi? Well, if you're going to be on camera, you should say hello. Maybe if you want to, or if you want to say hello, you can. You just want to wave. He can't see you. See how you can't be, you, you're not on the camera there. You want to wave? He's waving. No, you got to come over here. You want to ask him a question? What's up, buddy? That's like my daughter. She wants to, she kind of wants to like be in the camera, but doesn't want to say anything. She's, she's, like, yeah. I'm warming her up though. He's always, uh, he's always running amok in the background these days. I, I moved from downstairs. Uh, from upstairs to downstairs at my house. Yeah, that's why okay. it's that's why it's different behind me. <laughs> but nice, yeah, yeah, yeah man. For sure. Oh. How are things going with you? you oh, you've yeah. been you've been knocking these uh, these episodes out like crazy, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I just you know I I got a hold of uh, some. I, I went to government scam dot com and got a hold of a lot of uh, information there, and I was like perusing through it and i was like dude like this is, uh, i know i can do more this can you can you stop that please 
please. Mm -hmm. It's very distracting. Yeah. And uh, I, I saw all the information there and I was just, you know, thinking to myself, I can, I can share this, I can read this and comment on it and help help make a little bit more sense of it. And with the show being named what it is, it kind of makes sense to be maybe reading some books and arming people with some of this knowledge that that I'm discovering and going and taking in and everything like that, you know, with it being a hitchhiker's guide to truth and the the book the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and in that book the main character has a book that's kind of saving his ass throughout the book <laughs> he's nice. reading it as he's going through and, and learning how to survive in the galaxy and yeah I, that's kind of what the show has turned into and it kind of like synchronistically made, makes sense that uh, you know every now and then i get a book i you know read it on the air you know I, yeah that's a that's a great style. I think that's awesome. I think the book you're doing now is uh, um, Government's the Biggest Scam, right? Yeah. It's by uh, Etienne de la Boy. Yeah. Squared. Et yeah. Etienne de la Boite Squared. And yeah. it, he's, uh, I haven't talked to him yet. One of these days, maybe, you know, but uh, he, I've heard a lot of his interviews and everything like that. He's a pretty cool dude. And, you know, he put together this book where it's like a bunch of like, you could even break it down to like one pagers where, um you just find a topic of it and it just lays it all out right there and as i'm going through i'm getting my feet wet with the whole live streaming thing and and kind of fine tuning it you know as i go uh, a lot of self criticism is helping because you know what better critic than yourself i don't in the past a couple of episodes i haven't uh, included much but i'm starting to build more and more through obs and and it's it's working out it's it's doing it's doing its job the program's doing its job and i'm i'm just you know i uh, get in a fine i get in a feel for it as i go um man yeah you do, you're doing it right and that's just starting and then you got you know you got the mindset of wanting to improve and evolve and that's what that's what people need to understand is that at some point you got to just jump in and you're going to get better as you go yeah, it's like, uh, it, exactly. It's, it's um, conquering that, that little bit of fear. Like, you just, you just go and do it, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's fun. It, it's fun. All the, all the same. And, uh, and I get to like, kind of, you know, stre stretch my, my pipes a little reading. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not, there you go. it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the voice in your head is a lot. It's a lot better at, uh, at making sense of everything than, <laughs> yeah you all right okay it's uh, oh, oh you got your guy <laughs> yeah he's he's so funny he's got like separation anxiety we had we adopted him he's he's a cutie but he's always got to be on my lap right so he's a little lap dog this is my first small dog so yeah yeah you know that, that's funny you say that yeah when i read to myself i'm a pro it's just so fluid and, and tackling big words when i read out loud i feel like i'm a 10 year old <laughs> A lot of background noise and you're having a blast which is great but it's also very distracting thank you sorry bud what a cutie yeah he's he's just a he's a blast to hang out with and everything but he's at this very like rebellious stage where he's just pushing boundaries to learn and that's what they do and it's very tough to maintain patience you know, and you know, you crack sometimes, but Hey, like that's, that's just part of it. It's part of the, part of the experience. It's part of the totally. job, you know, yeah, man. and that's how he learns when the boundaries been pushed too far is when you kind of got to throw down the hammer a little bit and just, exactly. you know, lay down as much as I hate to refer it like this, but like kind of just lay down the law. <laughs> this, yeah. I don't know how else to really say it, but you know. Yeah, no, for sure, dude. It's, I mean, it's all, at that age, how old is he? Four? He's, he's five. Five, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about learning boundaries, right? There, mm -hmm. It's, you know, at that age, the, the ego is, is really predominant. So they're still, it's all about them pretty much, right? So they're kind of learning their boundaries and stuff. And that's what you're there for. You're the, the guide. Right, right. The steward, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, man. Oh, yeah, I sure. think about it as just like, you know, oh, well, 
why don't the kids listen? It's like, well, you try being that young and learning all of these things at the same fucking time. You're not, you, and boom, 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 just oh, bah, 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 coming at you at a million miles per hour every single day of your life. It's like, then try to listen to somebody else at the same yeah. time. It's like, of course, they're not going to listen. Of course, they're going to have trouble settling down. Of course. But yeah. there comes a time where it's like, hey, you, you might be doing something unsafe. You need to listen to me right now. Yeah, <laughs> you for know? sure. 100%. You, you know, he, he both likes being on camera and not <laughs> yeah, every time. Not I, shy. No. <laughs> Are you going to say, say hello right into this? Say hello. <laughs> no? Okay. But yeah, it's a, it's a blast. Yeah, man. It's a journey. You, you have two kids, don't you? Yeah. 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 Right. Our, uh, our daughter is upstairs. She, mm -hmm. My wife, my wife, God bless her. She's trying to get Lily down to, to sleep right now, you know, and, uh, and it's not, always, that's not always easy. She's teething mm, <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. So it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. But, for yeah. sure, man. Yeah. So what's it, what's it like co-parenting? Oh man, it's very unique. Is, yeah. Uh, probably the word of choice that I, that I'll start with. Uh, I know this isn't like planned or anything, so. Oh, it's all right. No, it's all cool. Right. I'm, I'm open to all topics, man. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. And, uh, this was actually a topic that I was going to do almost a whole presentation on because, you know, the majority of people are co-parenting. So, um, well, once you start thinking about it, every set of parents is co-parenting. Just some are, I mean, if you want to kind no, of chalk you, it up to, to you're kind absolutely of a, right. you know, yeah, exactly. Some are doing it a different way. So what, what, are, what's your experience with co-parenting? Um, I'm, I'm lucky in a sense that, um, Sarah, my daughter's mother, you know, we're, we're on the same page of, on certain things, you know, certain, the, the things that matter, meaning schooling, you know, vaccination, all that kind of stuff, um, morality, that's good. Um, but still you're dealing with a separate type of person. So the boundaries, again, here we go, boundaries have to be in place. And, um, so you know, any kind of issues that come up, it's mainly personal between her and I relationship. We do a really good job at uh, facilitating when it comes to our daughter. So we both put her first. We, you know, we try to the best of our abilities to keep our own stuff aside um, so it doesn't affect her as much as possible. Now, we've had a lot of practice because we've been living together as well. So we've been living together for two and a half, almost three years, but separated, not in a you know romantic relationship. Um, so that was really good practice and yet very tough. So I, I don't actually regret any of it because I learned so much about myself. It was like constant shadow work. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's going, it's going smooth as smooth can be well that's so, great yeah, yeah it's all right can you get up please thank you and yeah. and one you know probably the best piece of advice is for someone is to you got to pick and choose your battles and even though that's cliche there's a lot of stuff that i just suck up and not meaning I'm a pushover, but I don't, I don't engage. I'm not going to engage in sh uh, certain situations that will feed and fire the, uh, the problem, you know, especially if it's coming, you know, from her side and yeah, sorry. Um, Good. if it's coming from her side and, and, and I know I can use foresight and see where this is going to go and it's going to be a big deal. So, um, but then boundaries as well. You got to establish boundaries. I mean, talk, like communicate them and, and, and almost have a sit down meeting on an almost a regular basis and talk about the boundaries and, you know, what are principles, what are priorities that you guys want, are going to focus on. And so it, it's communication is right up there. So you got to establish that.
Dude, my hat's off to you, man. I come in from a, a, a family where my parents were divorced. I, I don't even remember. I think there's like two, maybe three tops memories of them actually being cordial to one another while being in the same room. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's just amazing, you know, that you'd be able to be grownups <laughs> about, about it, you know. That's yeah. what the, the world needs more of that, you know what I mean? It yeah, it, it it's it's been a battle. Uh, I'll say that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not, not easy. It's been up and down. I mean, you know, unfortunately, you know, been through the courts and all that kind of stuff. That's you know not by my my wanting. I wanted to to work things out beside that. But when when resentment is there, and you're dealing with two people, if both people aren't doing their their inner work, you know, there's going to be resentment that's going to come out to the surface, and that's going to be expressed externally. So, you know, but you can, um, you just got to take it one day at a time and one problem at a time. But I will oh, yeah. say, you know, to give us the benefit of a doubt, we put our daughter first 100% of the time, which, you know, she's, she is a good mom. So that's awesome. Yeah, dude. That's what it's all about. You know, the kids, the kids, the kids, they yeah. always come first, man. And, and it's really it's really great to know when the shit hits the fan that she, her and I are on the same page. Yeah. So that, that's good. That's like the most important thing really. A right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, you know, when, it, when you break it all down, that's what matters. All the other little, the little, uh, you know, BS and stuff. That's just, it's just know, that minutia. Yeah. Just exactly. that it's just BS, uh, you know? Yeah. And that's that I, I, uh, I I wanted to ask you that because last time we last time we spoke, like you had mentioned that you co-parents, and I was just like, I've been thinking about it. I was just like, I I wonder what that's like, you know? Um, not, you know, I'm, I'm not like like downing on it. Like everybody, every every family does what that family individual like family unit needs to do in order to be productive, like to be the most productive father, to be the most productive mother, you know, like you put your own needs to the side for the child. And sometimes the, the two, the mom and the dad, they can't be, you know, one, so to speak, but like, in, in a sense, like you have no choice, you have to figure it out, like for the benefit of the kid, a lot of a lot of parents, I mean, I think that there's too many parents that do this. Like, even if they they just don't put their differences aside for the kid, they they kind of they kind of just all out war on each other. Mm -hmm. and yeah. One second, you want the gate down? Yeah. Tell me, what's up? <laughs> what? He wants to show you. He lost a tooth. Oh. Let's Come see. over here. Come over here. Look up. Get your mouth out. Get your hand out of the way. Just go. Just go. Oh, it's a. It's one of the front ones. Nice. Do you want to tell yeah. him how? Do you want to tell him how you lost a tooth? You can tell him. I can tell him. So he was playing, and he was jumping around. It was during the summertime, and he lost it early, and he fell, and bam! Hit his face off of a toy. Oh wow! <laughs> pop, pop goes the tooth pop right, right out. out, huh? Oh yeah, Ooh. pop right out. He's a tough yeah. little kid. He he was uh, upset that he saw the blood coming out of his mouth, but then kind of collected himself pretty quick for a five year old. For, well, he was four at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, strong I, kid. Yeah, they they they're resilient. They are these little ones, you know. Yeah. No, I I'm I'm my daughter. She was young. She was like three, and she tripped when we were on a walk. She like took off running bam face foot face first in the concrete her tooth was like her front tooth was like almost it was like projecting out of her mouth and i was you know it was just as a parent with a young kid your heart's pounding you're like oh my gosh and i just grabbed the tooth and i just pushed it back down and set it back in place and then it was good right it's a baby teeth there's like no roots and stuff and oh man but still those kind of experiences man they can be they can be rattling for sure yeah <laughs> that's the that's the beautiful thing about experiencing things for the first time right it's like yeah you see it as a as a dad i see it and i'm like oh, i remember when it was me but they don't have that memory yet 
So it's like, mm. oh, wow. Like, that's uh, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, going back to what you were saying uh, a little yeah, bit ago. sorry. Uh, no, no, <laughs> not. it's totally cool, man. Take it away, my man. My, I'm all about the organic, natural conversations, right? This is life. This is what happens. I got my yeah. dog on my lap. You got your baby boy right next to you. This is what yeah. it's about. It's awesome. Um, yeah, no, you're right. You know, parents, they, um, the, the resentment is there and that's like predominant. And unfortunately the kids are almost used as pawns. They're right in the middle of it. And, um, that's when, when, when parents are separated and they're co-parenting, that's the foresight that they need to have is to, it's playing out the cause and effect in their head right? It's like, okay, if we're going to go through all this, the, the court battle, how is this going to affect our kids? Sorry, I was listening. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, yeah, you know, and it come it pretty much, you know, comes down to like stuff we talk about all the time is doing the internal work is, you know, looking at our indifferences and trying to uh, conquer those and resolve those. Yeah, which, you know, it's funny. It's so it's New Year's Day, right? Everyone's listing the, the list of New Year's resolutions they have, right? And resolution is to like resolve to, you know, to, uh, to conquer and solve a problem and stuff. And People have their lists of, oh, yeah, I'm going to get in shape and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And most people, it's very about the physical and materialistic. You know, it's like no one's going to say, well, not no one, but, you know, a lot of people aren't going to go, um, I'm going to be a, a, a better moral person or I'm going to stop lying to myself or stop lying to others or, you know stuff like that the, the the simple but yet profound inner characteristics that um that are deep in our subconscious that you know that actually dictate our behavior these resolutions always seem to be based in the self i mean and some of it is good but i mean <clears throat> it sounds like what you were saying is like the ones that the things that people don't really think about are not only the things that change yourself, but also change your environment. And then that spreads out and changes the world. Like stop lying. Like, mm -hmm. that, that was, yeah. that, that's a good one. That's a very good one. You don't see many Facebook posts of people going, my new year's resolution is stop being a scumbag. Like, <laughs> like no one wants to admit when they're, when, when they're, you know, lying, cheating and stealing, you know, like no one yeah. wants to do that. That's too hard. It's too hard for people to admit that. That's a problem, I think. Yeah. It's definitely yeah, it, it's something. De it's definitely a problem. That's, you know, that's when you, when you deduce it all the way down to its core, that's, this is where all the problems of the world lie. And the individual not actually looking at themselves and, and, and taking, um, you know, that second glance of their actions, how their, their psychological, their philosophical understandings are, right? This is, I mean, philosophy is it's so underrated for most people like most people think it's like you know reading um books in, at starbucks at the coffee shop you know and it's like someone's socially awkward if they're you know oh you're doing philosophy you know it's like nah man there's only two things to to create change in the world that's technology and philosophy so yeah it's it's uh that's a good point man yeah you don't we, see that often. No, you can, and you can use technology to express the philosophy. Sure. And not enough Absolutely. people. I, I don't think enough people do that. Or not enough people are even doing the the inner work to be able to do that out to to be able to express it. You know, and people. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. It, it seems it might be a little too late, but I hope it's not. I don't want a black yeah. bill here, but it might be um, for a lot of people. I think it's safe to say it is too late. Well, just looking at it logically with the, with the amount of numbers of people we have in the world, right? I mean, there's going to be a, um, a, the alchemical process of breaking down, right? To get to, to get to the change, there's going to be hardship that's unimaginable. 
Like that's going to happen. Like it's, it is, I'll tell you what it's not going to do. People aren't gonna just going to wake up in huge numbers and automatically change themselves. You know, we're kind of past that point. This does not mean, you know, stop, you know, stop speaking out, you know, speaking the truth and doing the great work. On the contrary, there's two parts to this too. We're also preservers of knowledge, right? We need to speak out to get this into people's minds so they can apply it to themselves, teach it to their kids and teach it to other people. We're trying to create the, the ripple effect. But in reality, there is going to be a breaking down at, you know, in some point. So, I mean... We can be honest with ourselves, you know, you know, shit's not getting better. No. <laughs> so it's, yeah. It might be getting better in like small pockets. And that's, that's for now, okay. Um, because those pockets, like you, like tossing the stone into the pond, those ripples get bigger as a, as more time goes on and more ripples, you know, you just spread out that's how i like to think about it just like the that principle of you know cause and effect and correspondence working together is the ripples get bigger as as a little bit of time goes on they do dissipate exactly. though you're going to go far into it <laughs> the ripples yeah. do eventually go away but you know and then the change happens the ripples and then it settles back down after that change so yeah i'm hoping I'm hoping that we don't get to a point where things go hot, but I don't yeah. know, man. <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, it, it's not, it's not likely. Like I think things are going to get hot. So I, I stand by, you know, uh, my two categories is, is speaking publicly, uh, you know, propagating the, the knowledge of natural law, morality, and also preparedness. So, you know, I consider myself a prepper, you know, I tried to, uh, you know, learn knowledge of foraging and this kind of these skill sets, these life skills. Um, so we we do see already that the split in society is, has already happened, right? This is just going to kind of grow and expand. So we're definitely going to see this. And, you know, people that think there's a great awakening, by no means is there at all. There's no great awakening. I would say, though, that there is a great awareness i think in this time period the age of aquarius just the natural energy that's coming in is stronger and intense which is probably why they're doing you know the the uh the socially perceived crisis of um divok which is covid backwards right which means um in hebrew it means um, um to break down to destroy i think that's the term of it um, so, and then, so we see this split in society where at some point people that understand natural law, nature, the laws of nature, they kind of go down the path of, um, you know, closer to the, the natural world, right? Um, ag agorism, um, living off grid, this kind of, this kind of thing. This is the path that mo most people kind of travel down the opposite. The other spectrum is, you know, fully assimilation into the metaverse and web three coming out which is which is another crazy topic which um i can talk about some pros and cons on that as well but um not many pros i'm just saying it's mostly cons no. uh so yeah we see the split we see the split happening um i do think that the social engineers do want it to go hot at some point i think um part of their objective is to depopulate uh, because they're trying, in my opinion, they're trying to make the perfect control system. So it, it will be easier um, with, you know, a little bit less numbers for sure. And obviously, you know, people are going to do that for them by, you know, genetic modification and all that kind of stuff. So right. maybe it's not some mass culling, but a, I don't know, a socially engineered way to help, not help, but to make it harder to uh, have harder to survive. Sure. Harder to reproduce. Yeah. I think I saw I mean, You can kill people just off stress alone, right? Sure. Like, sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I saw something recently where like for the first time and like for the first time we are below the, we are, uh, the reproduction rate is below the replacement, uh, at least for the United States. The amount of people that need to be born to replace the amount of people that are passing away 
Mm. We're below that figure. So there are more people yeah. dying than being born like right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, is there some huge, like, I don't know, it's, is it, dump jump in the realm of conspiracy for a moment you know conspiracy theory for a moment is it some huge plan some depopulation agenda i don't i don't know but i'm leaning i'm kind of leaning toward saying yes um yeah just for the sheer fact that like people get sent to war for what uh, later on we find out is a bunch of bs uh people you know, they, people get fed crap food that's made available by governments. People, you know, get fed a bunch of lies that get them all stressed out and scared. And then they have, you know, bad mental reactions and go and do crazy things that otherwise they may never have done that wind up getting a lot of people killed or hurt. So, I mean, is it a manufactured crisis to a degree? Yes. Is it, is it a hundred percent? I don't know because I'm not there, but I can speculate that it is and kind of connect the dots enough dots connect where it starts making a little bit more sense. The more, the more you look into it, the less you want to see, you know, yeah. and you start seeing things about the trilateral commission, the council on foreign relations, the Bilderberg group, the, the, the Rhodes scholars and, <laughs> then you're just like whoa like these groups these people are a lot of them are in power a lot of them are in charge of a lot of things and it starts you start your your mind just starts going and it's just yeah. like whoa and then you know you look at how those groups were formed and the foundations that were built to form those groups and you think that those foundations don't exist anymore i mean for Christ's sake, like the eugenic society has changed its name to, to something else, but they're still doing the same exact thing. It's just a different name. It's like, it's like how people will say like, Oh, Rome never fell. They just rebranded and now they're the Vatican. And it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> you know, the rock that the Vatican is built on that used to be Rome, you know? So yeah. Exactly. Okay. Same with uh, you know, Nazi Germany, when you find out, you know, operation paperclip, Right. Took all the scientists in, you know, it's like, right. where do you think their kids are, you know, functioning and stuff? They're functioning at high levels of uh, power mm. and government and institutions. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and Warner, von Braun. Yeah. Yeah, Warner exactly. von Braun being a, a Nazi rocketeer, like rocket engineer. And then he gets, he gets hired to, and oh, next thing you know, NASA exists. It's like the, the, these things don't just exist in movies. Like the movies tell you the truth. And they, then you go and think that it's just some fucking Hollywood not you, but the people you know, yeah. that, they, oh, it's just something that Hollywood did. I literally had an interaction with a dude. Like, there's a television show about Operation Paperclip. I forget what it's called, but it does exist. It does exist. Yeah, I think, I think I've think, heard about this. I think Al Pacino might be in it or something. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure uh, who stars in it, but it's a show that exists, and it's literally the story of o Operation Paperclip, and a dude I work with at like was talking about it. And I was like, Oh, that's operation paperclip. And he goes, what, what's that? And I'm like, that's the show you're watching, bro. That actually happened. And he goes, no, it didn't. I'm like, yes, it did go look it up. And the next day he goes, I can't believe it. He actually went and looked it up and he was yeah. like, Oh, I can't believe it. I'm like, yeah, man, that happens all the time. They tell you what they're doing through movies and stuff. It's just like predictive programming, operant conditioning, all of that stuff just boom right in your face. <laughs> yeah, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. It is. That even the level of ignorance that people don't have of, of any of this stuff, right? It's like, right. Well, um, people, I don't even know if it's ignorance, but people don't know how much they know. <laughs> You know, like yeah. they, they're fed this stuff through Hollywood movies and television shows and they internalize it. They have the knowledge of it, but they don't know that it's not fiction. Exactly. <laughs> like they don't exactly. know, like these yeah. stories that you're, that you're watching on television actually mean something. I'm like, uh, like, it's just so ridiculous to me that people don't yeah. want to just go, well, I wonder where they got the idea for that. I mean, it's a place called Hollywood for Christ's sake, like yeah. it's where the magic happens. Well, no shit, because they make magic wands out of holly wood yep. <laughs> and you got to do it at a certain time of day on a Wednesday. <laughs> it's, it's like, 
What do Once I know? You go down that road, man, and, and you get you get an accurate uh, perception of of just what has happened and what is happening. I mean, it's like the the occult mockery is just mind blowing. How much they do that, and they do that for a good reason, right? They, I mean, the majority of people it's, are tacitly agreeing. They they take in that information and they don't say no. You know, it's just so it goes right into their subconscious mind and they comply. And, you know, it's just like saying yes, really. I mean, if you don't say no and you and you're actually performing the action, well, then you're you're going along with it. Uh, it you're you're kind of alluding to the whole like, well, how does the karma not go on to them? And why do we why are we the ones kind of getting that bad karma? Because we're not stopping it. Right, like these exactly. these plans and everything, they're tell that's revelation of the method is what I was trying to think of earlier. Not not necessarily it is operant conditioning, it is uh, predictive programming, but it also is revelation of the method. And they're telling you exactly what they're planning, exactly what they're doing, right to your face. Yeah, they're speaking, yeah, they're speaking English, but it's not the same English that the layman speaks. And exactly. people, it, it's it's mind blowing. It's yeah. mind blowing how often you see these moments in, in television and in movies right there and people don't know what they're seeing. And because we don't say no, because we don't do anything to stop it. That's why we're getting, we're, that's why we're suffering. You know, it's almost like natural law is working against us from time to time. It feels yeah. that way. Man. That's, that's how it feels. I mean, in reality, it's, it's working, it's working per, to perfection. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. natural law is perfect, is the perfect system. And, um, and and that's the thing. Everything that we see that's going on, it's it's the the social engineers making their offer. They're like they're telling you this is what we're going to do. This is our offer. They do it in symbolism and allegory, which goes straight to the subconscious mind. So therefore, if you don't know yourself and know how your psyche operates, it just goes over your head. But uh, it's there right in plain sight. Right. So it, it is an offer. It's like a, it's a contract. It's an energetic contract, pretty much. And you're right. People are just are taking it hook, line and sinker. So and unfortunately, you know, moral people and people that understand this. Yeah, we do feel the the brunt and we see it right because of just the the collective, the ag aggregated um, uh, of, of conditions. So, and you know, and, and this energy building up, I mean, it's like a rubber band. It's going to snap back. That's why I do think there's going to be a, um, it, it's going to get bad, physically bad. You know, it's, I mean, it, at some point it, it, there's going to be a breaking down, um, of, of society. Um, and I think we are going to see that for sure. It's just the, at some point with the cause and effect, it just, it just boils over the rubber band snaps back. And, and we're going to see it. So you can only you can only be an immoral society for so long before you engage into that next transition of slavery and bondage. So um, let's let's turn let's let's uh, turn gears here cool. uh, toward the end. Um, let's let's talk about solutions for the last you know few minutes here before we got to part our part ways. Uh, we got we got maybe about like 10 minutes left 10 15 minutes. So Let's talk solutions. When that rubber band snaps, Mr. Will Keller, what do we do? Mm. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many different ways. And I, I try not to I try not to go down the road of how it's gonna happen, more of why and stay grounded in the present moment. So like what can we do right now? We're having a conversation, we're going public, we're we're talking about this kind of stuff. That's good. I prepare for anything, but you know, I'm not going down the list of you know, um, uh, EMP could be an option. All these options, I'm not going down the list. I'm just prepared to do what to be self sufficient. Period. That's what it is. If I, I mean, I need food, water, um, shelter, all that kind of stuff. So learn foraging, uh, water filtration, uh, know your area. You know, get get an actual map and understand how to read it, um, understand uh, longitude and latitude, how to read the sun, um, astrology, the ultimate science, 
you know, it's also a map as well, not only a map of consciousness in our mind, but a map of the, the, the physical world where we can get to destinations and, and di direction and stuff. But in the present moment right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to influence the unconscious hordes of people, right? These people that are completely unaware of, of what's going on and they're, they're resistant to it. Uh, you can't do that work for them. Right. So the only way to affect and influence the, the unconscious mind is by inspiring. So ultimately, we're artists. We, we create art because art inspires. Art has that effect in the mind, subconscious and the conscious mind to completely change your way of thinking and, and your perception. Right. You take you take another look. It, it could be music, painting or whatever we do, public speaking presentations we talk to people uh you know my partner john does music so there's many forms of that but ultimately we're artists creating art to try to influence people to um to change their 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 energy and their perception in their mind their psych their psychology so and that's that's what we do we just need to get more people talking about this kind of stuff um, suffering's the ultimate teacher. So, you know, I mean, eventually if people aren't going to get it, then, you know, there will be suffering, uh, with no limitations, I think. So, and even then, even then we have the, op the, the moral obligation and the duty to preserve this knowledge and to teach it to others. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that a lot of people don't understand about this stuff is that, and, centuries past long long time ago people would fucking get murdered for knowing these things for knowing how yeah. to how, how to speak about freedom to know how to speak about anarchy and how to speak about natural law how to speak about the trivium method the quadrivium method of truth discovery how to know this knowledge would get people killed and that's an that's something i think a lot of people take for granted these days is the ability that we have to discover truth is far beyond anything that, that any ability to discover truth in the past we have more ability these days than ever before in human history people put their heads in the sand and they live in their little little you know their, their lives and their little bubbles mm -hmm which is fine you want to live that way fine but when that ignorance comes around when you know when the when it comes home to roost don't expect me to go down in flames with you <laughs> yeah 100 yeah, percent. i'm and, not planning and, and on they it. don't even have the right to do that like they if you think about it they don't have the right to be ignorant on freedom and slavery they have a right to be ignorant on um how to bake a blueberry pie sure, sure. If you don't know how to do it that's fine but when it comes down to slavery and freedom you are actually affecting those around you and you know other human beings so people don't actually have the right this is getting into the the ethical and and the deeper side of it but still it should be talked about you know it's like right. but right. you're right you know the i mean it, it's when the shit hits the fan like-minded individuals are going to band together and then what let's just say society collapses and you know uh there's no more grid or anything well guess what the new you know anyone that's trying to do the one great work you know you are traveling to village to village still talking about morality and natural law because that control system is just it doesn't matter who it is right people always want to know oh who's the who's the top people that their names behind all the social engineers it doesn't matter because they will be replaced it's a yeah. state of mind right there's just yeah. the, the, the new uh satanists uh egotists will just step up and take those roles so yeah it's the power vacuum that we're fighting exactly yeah exactly yeah the vacuum it, it will be it, it there will be an attempt to fill that vacuum that void if you will and yeah. i mean hell i i like what you brought you brought up uh you quickly brought up agorism earlier and i think that's yeah. a i think that is a very very uh practical real world type of solution that, that could really motivate people into understanding what a large amount of what we talk about and the messages that we're trying to get across to people start looking into agorism. And that's a really, so agorism is an idea brought forward by a gentleman named Samuel Comkin, the third, 
And it was a quite a long time ago that he brought forward this idea. So the best thing for you to do is get his pamphlet. It's about, it's, I think it's just under a hundred pages long. It's called the agorist primer mm -hmm. and it's available. It's very cheap. It comes in paperback. It's about like this thick. I mean, it's like this thick. It's not very, it's not a very big read at all. And it, uh, so anyone that's not heard of agorism, I'll crash course it right now. Agorism is counter economics. It's shade tree uh, economics, where basically you are going around the state and continuing your, your business in a more freedom mindset where you do very small trades, like uh, so in, in a very private way. And agorism comes from the Greek word agora, which meant marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so you just fair trade, it's, it's basically comes down to fair trade. And you trade your skills for another person's skills or your material for another material, but you're that material that you got is a product of your skill anyway. So it all comes down to skill and trade. So why do you call being an electrician, a plumber, HVAC, mechanic, a driver of, of a vehicle? Those are all called trades. Why? Because back in the day, you would trade them. <laughs> you trade your skills. I know how to fix the pipes in your house. You know how to fix the electricity in mine. You fix my electricity, I'm your guy for your pipes. Boom. Fair exchange. Fair exchange. The An exchange of 100% natural way. You know, we're all one human soul family, but we're all individually unique in our own way, right? And mm -hmm. and this is this is what it's about. This is the natural way of voluntary interaction. And so yeah, well said. Yeah, all all action should be voluntary at the end of the day. All action Absolutely. should be voluntary and to be uh, not to like open up another can of worms here, but we already live in an, in a world where all, all these actions are voluntary. If you think about it, mm. because you voluntarily bend the knee to the state. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if, if a large enough portion of people stood up and said no more of this shit, it would go away. <laughs> it wouldn't be pleasant. It wouldn't be easy. I know I just painted a very nice picture, mm -hmm. but it, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, if it, that's that, it's that easy, huh, James? No, it's not. But uh, in theory, yes. In, but yeah, in, no, yeah. you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Something, something for people to do right now, and I think this is crucial. Right? We need courage, obviously. But if someone is not it they're considering these topics and they're feeling in, in alignment with them, you know, reach out, start doing your research and, and, and find, you know, freedom cells and, and get together with groups of like-minded individuals so you can learn from and inspire each other, right? Now is the time to actually do something. It doesn't have to be on a video doing a podcast, but get involved somehow. I mean, I do think that people need to, to be public, but first you're going to have to, you know, use the technology that we have now do some research connect with groups in your area start having these discussions and you know that's that's how you know me and my group that's how we got together in the beginning of all the covid shit that happened it was just a support um you know i threw a line out there on a zoom link with um you know just anyone that wants to chat during lockdown and bam we formed our group and then we get together we go out and we and we educate the the public and now we're doing a conference so it's just the evolution, but action is required. Damn right. That's all it is. Positive action. That's well, that's what's required, you know. Got it, brother. Living in uh, you know, there are a couple of laws that do need to be followed, but they're not man made. Uh so you know, living with uh morality in mind, which is objective. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And if mm -hmm. they do, you can send that person to will. <laughs> or myself Absolutely. it will school them and then you know natural law so i mean they run hand in hand so um all right so we've been we've we've done almost an hour well it's just like that boom yeah flew right by flew uh, right by man it's good good convo dude yeah i really appreciate your time and you know and even we were, <laughs> we were gonna do this even later but i mean i really appreciate yeah. you uh coming in you know, getting it, getting it done a little earlier. It helps me out a lot. Um, oh man, it's my pleasure, dude. Thanks for having me. So I'm, I'm going to definitely include this information in, uh, in the show notes, but where can people find your work and more information about funnel? Absolutely. So my website is naturalfreedomleague.com. 
Um, I'm also a content creator on the one great work network.com. That's uh, that was hosted and, and created by Mark Passio. So I got all my work on there as well. And the funnel conference that's freedom under natural law. Uh, that's February 12th to the 13th of this year, 2022 and go to freedom under natural You can register. It's a free event, um, online and, uh, it's going to be kick ass, man. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I always, uh, I always love hearing your presentations and Chris, uh, Chris has done a, an amazing job. Shout out Chris Jansen, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm James Cordiner. You've been listening to a hitchhiker's guide to truth. Um, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right. Uh, so we're going to stop the